Hello and welcome to Faithfully Stampin' with Jennifer Helm. I am Jennifer Helm, an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! And today I am going to show you how to make a teepee card. Now, the way I'm holding the card right now, it might not look that impressive, but this card has a little magic to it. Because it's folded flat right now, but if I pick it up and put it together, it makes a three-dimensional card that looks a little bit like a teepee. So it actually will stand on your table or your shelf and makes a great display piece. When I first saw these cards, I was given one at a swap with other demonstrators and I was fascinated with it and I thought, oh my goodness, this looks really complicated to make. I don't know how they did this. And then I realized it's actually only made up of three cardstock squares. So it's all in the assembly. So I'm going to show you how to do this with just a few simple supplies. To start with, you need a piece of cardstock that is eight and a half by 11 inches. This is Bumblebee, one of our new ink colors. And I'm just gonna pull my paper trimmer over. And on the eight and a half inch side of the paper, I'm going to cut at four inches. And then I'm going to repeat that step. So I'm gonna have a half inch strip left over. There we go, I wanted to make sure it was lined up just right. And now I'm going to flip to the 11 inch side and I'm going to cut at four inches again. So basically I'm just making four, no I'm sorry, I'm, going, I'm making three four inch cardstock squares. So you're gonna have a scrap to get rid of. And then I have one more cut to make. Get rid of that scrap. And before I put my trimmer away, I have a couple more things to do. <clears throat> First of all, I'm going to score each one of these squares on the diagonal. And how I like to do that, keep it plain and simple, is I take my trimmer and I line up my points with the little trough for the trimmer. And then once I have it lined up and I close my little arm here, I take my scoring blade, which is a lighter colored one, and just quick score, and now I've got that fold line. So I'm just going to repeat that. You can either open the arm and line it up like I did the first time or you can actually kind of peek through the cutting track and see when you're lined up and do it that way. So whatever way works best for you. Mine depends on mood of the day sometimes. So three squares scored on the diagonal. Now I'm going to take a piece of designer series paper and I'm going to cut a square that is three and three quarter inches. So for this, I'm using some of our Dandy Garden designer series paper. And I'm just going to cut this to a square. As I said, that's three and three quarter inches. And now instead of scoring, I'm actually going to cut this paper. And let's see. It doesn't really matter. You might want to take a look at your how your project is going to come together, which will make sense once we do it. If you have directional paper, you'll want to be careful how you cut it. With an overall floral print, it's not quite so difficult. And let's see. One more thing you need is a square of basic white that is three and three quarter inches square as well. And we're just going to cut this on the diagonal. So as I said, it's not a lot of supplies. It's just a few squares, either cut or scored on the diagonal. So now I can put my trimmer away and we'll go ahead and assemble the card. First, I like to take my bone folder and fold on my score lines and burnish them. And I do it both directions. So I score and then I open them the other way so that I just have nice crisp lines. And this helps with the fluidity and the movement of this card when we put it together, the sharper your lines are. If you don't have a bone folder, it's okay to use your finger, it's fine. So to assemble these, it's not difficult. You just have to make sure you have your angles right. I like to look at my cardstock 
and there's one side that has a little bit more of a raised fold to it and I like those to face up to face me and then I put them together in the center so that they make a triangle so hopefully you can see that that I've got my triangle here and so what we're going to do is take this third diamond and position it like so but you have to be careful where you put glue because you don't want to put it all over and then have it down here on the flaps where you don't want to have glue so a little trick that I like to use is I take my pencil and I make just a tiny pencil mark a little tick mark at the sides where my points are and then down here at the bottom where my diamond overlaps the square and now I know that I need to keep my glue within this specific area so normally I'm not a fan of liquid glue I prefer tape runner adhesive it's just easier for me but liquid glue is really nice for these cards because it holds and you have a little bit of flexibility when you're putting it together it doesn't set instantly so if you get a little off you can have a little movement so I'm going to take our Tombow liquid glue or green glue as some people call it and I like holding the the fine end right down on the paper you do not need a lot of glue for this a little goes a long way and I don't want it oozing out everywhere so I try to get it along my edges but I definitely want to stay within the area I want my glue to be in so now that that's done I'm going to push these back together again and then I'm going to take my card I want it to be able to fold up towards me if that makes sense and I'm just I kind of hold one side up and lay that down and then I make sure you you're lined back up again I kind of shifted my cardstock here and let's see this is much easier when you're not trying to hit yourself in the head with your camera stand but there we go I've got my two squares with my diamond overlaid just a little press and that glue is pretty much ready to go so that's the great thing about this Tombow liquid glue so now I'm going to decorate it and the first step is to flip it over and you'll see this is how we're going to assemble the card so first two steps are to take your designer series paper and you're going to be gluing the pieces here on these panels to the right and so this is what I was talking about with the direction of your designer series paper so I'm gonna pull over my silicone mat because I want to make sure that I get my adhesive all the way to the edges actually I think I'm gonna be brave and use my glue you could definitely use a tape runner for this, but the glue works as well. And the glue will wipe right off of the silicone mat. And so all you need to do is leave yourself a little border, press down that triangle, and then repeat with the second one. And as I said, you could just use your tape runner adhesive. That's actually what I did for all these other cards that I assembled. I'll show you a couple of samples here in a little bit. And make sure you've got your triangle turned the right way. And again, leave yourself a little border, but these pieces fit on here quite nicely. Press that down. Now I need to stamp my sentiment. And so I'm using for this some of the images for, from the Dragonfly Garden set. This is a beautiful stamp set we have with the dragonflies and the flowers. And if you need any supplies, you're welcome to check out my website. I do have a monthly host code you can use if your order is $150 or less. 
If it's more than $150, don't use my host code because basically you've hosted your own party and you get the show benefits for that. But if you do use my host code for a smaller order, you are entered to win a monthly prize from me. This month happens to be, for March 2021, a ribbon combo pack. So, just a little commercial there and if you don't have a demonstrator you're currently working with and you'd like to see a paper copy of the catalog please get in touch with me and I'd be happy to send you one so this is the trickiest part of the whole thing I think because we've cut a square in half and so it's got these right angles but when we stamp on this particular piece we don't want to stamp in accordance with this right angle because when we stand the card up, it's actually going to balance on these two points. So this is the hardest part because it tricks your brain a little bit. So there's a couple different ways you could do this. If you have grid paper, you could use that or a ruler, or I figured out, take this little half inch strip you have off your original piece of cardstock and lay it on your work surface so it's a straight line and just match up your points these two points at the bottom of your card and if you have them lined up so that they're both edges are touching your straight piece or your ruler or your lines on your grid paper then you'll know what direction you need to stamp your message in because then this piece will have the correct orientation as I said this was the hardest part getting my brain to want to stamp in the right way so I'm going to take some bumblebee ink for starters and lost my, there we go. I have this beautiful floral image that I want to stamp here on this piece but I want it to come a little lighter so I'm going to stamp off before I stamp on my cardstock itself so I'm overthinking myself here. What I'm going to do is stamp here. I have enough ink on my stamp. It's a red rubber stamp. And I'm going to stamp off. I'll do it over here. I didn't bring extra scrap paper over with me. So I'm going to stamp off once on a piece of paper and then stamp here. And it's funny because this stamp is longer. This really messes with my head. Stamp. There we go. So can you see how that tricks your brain a little bit? And now I'm going to put my bumblebee ink away and I want to stamp my sentiment in something darker, so mossy meadow. And I have, my sentiment says, may good things grow all year long. And tap your ink pads, don't smush in your ink pads, little tap. You can see that I've got good ink coverage there. And then again, just watch your angles. And there we go. Now before I put my ink away, I'm going to stamp my envelope because this will actually fit in an envelope. So I have one of the coordinating stamps that I'm going to use there. And then I want to accent the card with some dragonflies. So we have several we have two different dragonflies you can pick from with this stamp set. So I'm going to take this one, and I've got a piece of scrap paper here. You can see I was using butterflies earlier, but I don't like to waste paper, so I'm actually going to stamp my butterfly or my dragonflies in between my butterflies to make use of my scrap. I'm a paper hoarder. Anybody else with me? And now I can put my ink away, and I'm going to bring over our dragonfly punch. This is very handy because it is a dual punch. It has a small dragonfly as well as a larger one. And I am using both sizes. I have some of the small ones pre-cut, so. Oop, I knew that was going to happen. Sometimes with punches, you have to have a little less cardstock at the bottom to line up. I was so excited about using my scrap paper, I didn't think about that. But that's okay, a little trim. And now I can position the dragonfly where I want. 
and I just line him up and punch. Now I have a beautiful image and I did pre-cut some of the small ones ahead of time. I had them left over from another project. So I'm not worried about those. So there we go, two large dragonflies. And now I'm going to just finish assembling the card. I'm going to put my Stamp and Seal Plus, making sure I don't have any overhanging my corners here. Put my stamped sentiment panel here. Again, just a little bit of a border around it. And now before I go to the decorating, I like to put my glue dot on. I find it easier to pick my decorations and put my decorations in place once I've got the card assembled. So you need some Velcro dots. Nothing fancy, nothing huge. These are a small pack you can buy really at any store, dollar store, Walmart, Michaels, Joann's, anything like that. And your glue dot's going to end up here, glue dot, Velcro dot. Velcro dot is going to end up here, but what I like to do is I take half my Velcro dot, hold it on my finger, and I fold the card so it makes the TP shape. And then I know I want the Velcro dot to be on the back side of this designer series paper panel. So once I figure out where it's going, then I open the card up and I'll put the Velcro dot here up at the corner, give it a little press, and then I go back and I get the other half of the Velcro dot and I match the Velcro pieces together. And then if I close the card and give it a press, the Velcro dot then is here where I want it and I haven't really struggled to figure out the perfect positioning for it. So that's just a quick tip on where to position your Velcro dot. So now all I need to do is fix my dragonflies. So I'm going to fold my card shut and grab my dimensionals. I'm going to put one right in the center. Depending on the shape of your decorations you might want to go with more than one dimensional. The reason I am sticking with one is because I'm going to overhang the edges of my panels just a little bit. One thing to keep in mind is when you fold this flat to put in an envelope, you do not want to have anything overhanging these edges because it's going to prevent you from putting it in the envelope. So you can overlap the center panel in between your designer series paper pieces. So I like to put, let's see, I'm going to put one here and since my dimensional is in the middle it's okay that my wing is overhanging the middle of the card. Hopefully that makes sense. I don't always explain things the best. And my second dragonfly I'm going to put down here. And then I thought it needs just a little something more. So I have these small dragonflies that I punched out earlier, but they're kind of plain. So I thought I would grab just a couple of our champagne rhinestones. These are so pretty, I love them. And I like to take our take your pick tool. It's a multi-purpose tool and it has on it the spatula end and it's great for lifting up embellishments. Sometimes when I use my fingernails, they go flying all over the place and then I have to track them down. Of course, this is being difficult tonight. Come on. There we go. See, I've got it right there on the end. So I just take two of these little champagne rhinestones and position them right on the center of my little baby dragonflies. There we go being extra persnickety today. So there is one. I think I'm actually going to flip. The other end of the spatula has a piercing tool on it and sometimes these are even better for lifting. Ha! See? Worked the first time. Lifting my little gems off and positioning them where I want them to go. 
one more. This just adds a, a cute little touch to our little baby dragonflies. And then all I'm going to do is flip these little guys over and put one miniature dimensional. We have two different sizes. These are the large honeycombs and these are the tiny ones. So obviously you don't want a large one that would hang over the back. So mini ones it is for this. Peel off the backing. And then I can position these along with my larger dragonflies. And there you have it. It's a perfectly lovely card that will sit on a table. It's a lovely piece. And if you want, you have this piece here with your sentiment, but you could always decorate or embellish more on the inside of the card and put your message here. It's up to you. So I have just a couple other samples to show you. I made two samples with our Butterfly Brilliance Designer Series paper. This is an exclusive pre-reveal pre from our new annual catalog, but the paper is only available now while supplies last. But when I put this card together, you can see just beautiful little butterflies and a pretty little sentiment. So not a lot of work involved for a lovely result. And this one is my favorite. And when I assemble this, Bright and Pretty Butterflies. This is from the Butterfly Brilliance set, then with a sentiment from the Butterfly Gala stamp set. And for these, I wanted a little more dimension, so I simply glued down the center of the butterfly and then lifted the wings. And then I did the same with the designer series paper, although these are on dimensionals. And you'll see, I added one little touch to this card that I did not on the previous cards. The, the little legs for the easels are just cardstock on these, the dragonfly and this butterfly card. If you want to dress it up just a little bit and add one more little touch, you'll just need two squares that measure one and a half inch square cut diagonally and then you'll just adhere the pieces on those little legs. I'll tell you this is the trickiest one here. You'll see I accidentally glued one to the wrong spot so even demonstrators make mistakes but that's okay I just decided not to peel it off but it actually goes down here in this corner near your velcro dot. So there you have a quick and simple but quite lovely teepee card. I hope you enjoyed this video I'd love it if you would subscribe to the channel so you can watch other crafting videos and feel free to visit me over on Facebook at The Faithful Stamper. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Happy crafting.